Hello everyone and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and today I want to continue my little series of comparative walkthroughs of modern decks. So I've showed you decks by Fournier and Spanish artists and I've showed you some US games produced decks um, around the central theme of portraiture. In this series um, I just want to compare decks that have some kind of a theme or commonality, and this one I'm calling the Playful Pips decks. So in front of me I have the Fifth Spirit deck on the left. Um, this is the indie version produced by Charlie Claire Burgess. It is now available in mass market through Hay House. Um, a couple of the cards have been designed uh, slightly differently, and then the card stock has been changed from a slippery linen sort of playing card kind of card stock to a more robust card stock that has a smoother finish. In the middle, we have the Inspired Soul Tarot by Julie Rose of Peekaboo Rose. Um, this was published in 2020, self-published through Make Playing Cards. So you can get the Inspired Soul Tarot at Make Playing Cards. That's the title card for this. Um, the other two decks don't have title cards. And then on the right, uh, we have the Polish Tarot, and the box for that one looks like this. Um, the front looks like that. And as you can see, the backs of the cards have uh, the artist's initials. So this is by Aleksandry Jasniak um, and designed by Anna Goluska. And unfortunately, this one is out of print, as far as I know. Um, you may be able to get it through Polish booksellers still, but I'm not sure. Um, and I don't know of any producer or distributor for the US, Canada, or Europe, um, or English-speaking parts of Europe, I should say. So I apologize for you know, showing an out-of-print deck um, on here, but I don't get to feature this deck very much because it's kind of its own thing and it's hard to really compare it to other decks. So I'm excited to bring this comparison to you today. Uh, what I'm going to do, as I have with the last uh, couple in this series, is do a comparative walkthrough. I'm going to try not to talk too much during the walkthrough and then at the end we'll have a sample reading where we'll do the same reading with all three decks and just see how the tonality, the voices, the specific imagery differs uh, between these three. So, like I said, this is the Fifth Spirit Tarot over here. This is the Inspired Soul Tarot. It does also come with um, two extra cards, uh, two versions of an extra card, and that's a card 22 um, with a Mandalorian on it, and it says this is the way. There's two different depictions of this, and this is the one I choose, and I do read with this card in the deck when I do readings, but I'm going to set it aside for now. And... Again, this is the Polish tarot, and it has titles prominently in English and then less prominently in Polish below. Um, I would say all three of these are somewhat minimalist, with the um, Polish tarot having the most sort of textures and patterns and colors. They're all pip decks, as I mentioned in the beginning. However, the uh, Fifth Spirit does lend itself more to an RWS um, style of interpretation. It, it follows more closely the um, some of the implied meanings of the Pamela Coleman Smith artwork. And um, so just keep that in mind, even though it's pippish, it's probably the most RWS leaning of the three of these. I've also mentioned that the Inspired Soul Tarot in the center is completely non-figural, so there are no um, faces in this deck, just settings, symbols, objects, that kind of thing. And speaking of symbols and objects, so here in the Fifth Spirit, you have an updated setting and, you know, someone in more modern dress. But then uh, in the major cards, there are symbols that refer back to um, the more ancient uh, depiction of these cards. So here you have the Hierophant, who is dressed as a librarian in a library setting. But then there are these um, ghostly images of keys uh, behind them and you know, 
referring to the Pope card. I'm sure there are cultural references in the uh, Polish tarot that I won't be able to pick up on because that's not my culture um, and I don't have you know experience um, with Polish culture or folklore even. So there could very well be symbols and imagery here that I'm not picking up on. If you do know about Polish uh, culture and you have any observations about this deck, let me know. I'm just gonna be pointing out um, things that that I see. I love Julie's sense of humor here in our center deck. Um, She's really done a good a good job. Sometimes she's quite literal and that's very punchy. Um, and then she's quite metaphorical in some cards and that also you know, conveys quite well. So in the fifth spirit on the left for the wand suit, we have the element of fire. In the center for the wands, we have representation of visual art or painting uh, and creativity, that kind of visual creativity. And then on the right, we have wands or batons, these green batons and these green borders. And in any pip deck when I'm reading, I like to look for uh, visual cues, rhymes, uh, similar shapes, colors, sizes of things, or relative sizes of things. So that's one of the ways that I use the simplicity of the pips to help me interpret the cards, help me uh, imagine what um, they might be saying in combination.
And even though Julie's deck does not have uh, people in it, what I sort of imagine is who would use this or who would produce this? Um, who would have been in the room when these things were created or whose tools are these? Um, so that helps me is to kind of picture that personality type or figure or uh, characteristic of who would be involved. Onto our cup suit and Julie's used glasses of wine to represent this. You'll see that occasionally the Inspired Soul and the uh, Polish Tarot use pip arrangements that are similar to the Marseille, but not always. And they don't always use the same arrangement as each other. So it's interesting to me to compare these side by side and see what these non-traditional pip decks look like. And for our air suit, for Julie's deck in the center, we have um, pens, fountain pens, as the pips, uh, rather than blades or knives or, um, I think, Fifth Spirit just uses sharp objects in general. So we're looking at a tool of communication, of uh, verbal creativity, So even though our deck on the left has the most direct correlation with the Rider Waite Smith imagery, you still get that sense of opposition, um, you know, tense energy from the center and the right side.
So for our last suit, the earth or coins or um, pentacle suit, uh, we have coins on the Polish tarot, we have buttons for Julie's um, inspired soul tarot, and then we have uh, sort of practical tools um, for our earth suit in the fifth spirit tarot. And I would say too, if you didn't know the Rider Waite Smith imagery, um, this deck would read a lot more pippishly to me, uh, just because it's it is collections of objects with no figures in the numbered cards. Alright, so now for the hard part, uh, we get to do a reading with each of these decks. I think I want to shuffle the Polish Tarot and try that one first and then go from there. So uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> so as I was shuffling the cards, I was thinking about uh, a potential client who's looking to buy a house um, or you know, piece of property. Um, and kind of what's going on with that situation. And in this uh, reading, um, I see that, you know, they're, they're here, they're full of enthusiasm, they have a big grin on their face, and they've got some paperwork um, with them. So, you know, maybe they're pre-approved or something like that. They've got, they've got, they're ready. Like, and they're, and they're very eager. They're like, yeah, I'm ready to go look at houses. Um, but I'm seeing a big blockage here, um, you know, all these wands crossed in front of this flame uh, type shape back here, um, and just a lot of energy going out in all directions. Um, so this is kind of confused energy, and I don't think that they can move uh, through this very well. I don't think it's going to end well. So I feel like this is just not a good time for the housing search um, interest rates have just gone up and you know there's um, not a lot probably on the market right now so I say table it um, this is this is a very one-sided uh, hope on their part you know they have all this energy but there's nothing to support them in their house hunt at the moment all right so here we have the reading again with Julie's deck the inspired soul tarot and we're starting here on the left with this salamander that's climbing up the feather image so I take that to mean that the uh, querent is climbing trying to climb the property ladder that's the idea that they have in mind 
um, but they're going to still come up against this central figure, which is uh, very latticed and in, in, in intertwined. And I still see that as a blockage leading to essentially exhaustion. Um, you know, no matter how much they throw themselves against that center card, they're still going to come over here and end up uh, burnt out and, you know, low on energy, and it's not really going to go anywhere. So I still see this as maybe not the best time to search for a house. All right, so for our last uh, Playful Pips reading here, we have the Page of Wands, Eight of uh, Fire, and the Death card, again, from the Fifth Spirit uh, Tarot. And again, I'm getting this sense of someone who's coming in with um, some energy. Uh, they have a bright idea, or at least they think they do. Um, but then they're up against this thing, which looks, you know, dangerous. Um, you got this fuse. All these rockets are going to go off at once in, you know, all different directions. There's no telling how this is going to end up. Are they going to take off? Are they just going to blow up in your face? Um, and then again, the death card. And even though this death card has sort of this beautiful uh, depiction of, you know, generations and, and cycles and all of this um, and renewal, which certainly, you know, death is a natural part of life. And um, so I don't necessarily view death as a negative card. But in this case, uh, preceded by, you know, this, this sudden burst of energy, this potential violence here with this explosion, um, I still don't think this is a favorable I'm not sure I can paint this in a favorable light here. Um, it, it again reads as, you know, overeager, something being chaotic or blocked or violent, and then a not a good outcome. Um, so again, I would read all three of these, uh, you know, from a baseline of, uh, from that perspective, even though they have a slightly different tone, even though they kind of say it slightly differently, um, I don't think it really changes uh, the outcome of the reading, at least in my mind. So let me know what you think of this. Um, this was a little bit of a stretch maybe theme-wise, but it was very interesting to me to see all three of these decks side by side. So I hope that was interesting and helpful for you too. And thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.